Citigroup uh, out with third quarter results. Leslie Picker has them. Leslie, what you got? Look at that stock already. Hey, up Andrew, higher. yeah. You Oh, yeah, you can add City to that list of companies beating expectations. Sizable beats here, especially on the bottom line for Citigroup. That beat was about more than 30 cents here per share. The street expecting 121 per share. City reporting 152. Now, including divestitures, it would be 163. On the top line, City generated $20.1 billion of 9%. In the quarter, analysts had that figure pegged at 19.3. So top and bottom line beats here. In the release, CEO Jane Frazier mentions the organizational changes that the firm announced a few weeks ago. She said when completed, quote, we will have a simpler firm that can operate faster, better, serve our client, better serve our clients and unlock value for our shareholders. However, there aren't any specific details in the release about what the reorg is going to cost or what it's going to save. The news was announced just a few weeks before quarter end, but there will likely be a lot of questions on today's conference calls about this specifically. As for Q3, City is highlighting some superlatives that help generate its quarterly beat within services, uh, treasury and trade solutions. That TTS division does cash management for large corporations, had its highest revenue quarter in the last decade. Rates and currencies revenue within City's markets division had their best third quarter in a decade. And even investment banking saw gains up 12%, excluding some lending marks. Debt capital markets showing some increased activity, but City also had mandates on the ARM, Instacart, and Clavio IPOs during the quarter. Personal banking and wealth management revenue higher by about 10% as well. City has been streamlining its focus and divesting international businesses throughout the past few years or so. The firm said two-thirds of that process is complete, with the Taiwan consumer banking business closing in the third quarter. City shares up about 1.5%. They were up as high as 2.2%, I saw, uh, right around the time that that release crossed. So come down a little bit, but still uh, up about 1.5%, the pre-market guys. Okay, so a question for you, which is that when you think about the earnings here, why is it that the provisions that we've been seeing in these reports, uh, they seem a little counterintuitive with more cautious tones from CEOs in the statements thus far? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, Andrew. So, you know, you have the the diamond commentary from this morning where he talks about how, you know, we're um, in kind of the most dangerous time we've seen in decades, given all of the geopolitical aspects in Ukraine uh, and now, of course, in the Middle East. And then here we've got uh, some commentary from uh, Wells Fargo, which is hosting their media media call, which kind of issued the same kind of cautious tone surrounding geopolitics. And yet in these releases, we see uh, a little bit of a release of reserves. And so there is kind of a disconnect there, but you have to take it, you know, take a step back. A lot of these banks have been provisioning for more in the last few quarters or so, just in, uh, you know, with the expectation that there could be some sort of a recession on the horizon. That recession keeps getting pushed down the road, pushed down the road, pushed down the right. road. So they're just trying to adjust to that, and their various models are doing the same thing.